Good morning, everybody. This is Ryan Alexander with Denison Yachting here to take you on another walkthrough. Before I show you the boat, I wanna tell you a very quick story about my nephew. My nephew is small, yet when he is in grade school, he chooses to play flag football. I also have a brother, a younger brother, and he's an amazing football coach. It's the fourth quarter. My brother's standing there next to my nephew. They run their huddle and my brother walks over to him, puts both hands on his shoulders. He kneels down and he says, do you know what you gotta do? And he said that my nephew uh, had tears running down the side of his face and he looked resolute because all he wanted to do was be the guy who got the flag. Well, today I'm showing you a boat with that same spirit. It is a 38 foot out island. There it is. This boat, like my nephew, goes out there and it gets the flag. It gets the job done. There are very few boats that you can compare this to because she is maxed out and has everything that you could ever ask for on a 38 foot fishing boat. So that out of the way, I'd like to introduce you to one of the coolest boats on the water. If you wanted to build a fishing boat that is always ready to go on the spot, this is pretty close to what it would look like. After all, the dream of any fisherman is to look at the following morning's weather report and green light a last minute run to the Bahamas for a weekend of fun. This boat would have to be capable, reliable, and by its very nature, it must be an overachiever. The way the owner of this 38 out island built his dream boat that goes by the name of JC was by rebuilding her from the bottom up. She was originally built in New Jersey in 2007. She was fished for a few years in Costa Rica with a primarily stock configuration until she was discovered by her current owner. He saw something special in this boat, a platform that could be gutted and refit into a fishing boat that was up to almost any challenge. The final result for all of his effort and intention is JC. With a 14 foot two inch beam and a three foot four inch draft, there aren't many places between the southeast of the United States and the Bahamas that cannot be traversed. Two years ago, when this boat was refit, everything was on the table. An obvious first step was replacing the motors. She was upgraded with a pair of Caterpillar's smokeless C7.1 engines. A byproduct of this is that her next owner will have warrantied engines through 2021. Another system that just had to go was the navigation package. As the standard equipment was removed, newer, more capable units were selected as replacements. The owner loves staying out on the hook. No fancy hotels or dockside parties with other boaters. When this boat is off the dock, she doesn't power down until the job is done. In the second that you drop the lines, JC steps up and delivers. However, the most distinctive feature of her exterior is her aggressive Catalina bow flare. From bow to stern, this boat has a way of winning you over and opening you up to the image of what it looks like for your hands to be on the wheel, barreling towards the Bahamas at over 30 knots. And there are two places from which you will be doing this, the first of which is atop her Marlin Tower. Making your way up this nine-step tuna tower means that you're about to have a great day. You might get too much sun, it might rain, and you're not even guaranteed to catch anything, but being up here means that you're pursuing something special. There's seating for two up here and a full helm to run the boat from. This helm includes a 10 inch garment on one side of the wheel and engine controls on the other. As the sun rises in the morning when you're already underway, this is an incredible spot from which to sit up here and soak it all in. On our way down, we pass a Garmin HD2 radar. This is 12KW instead of 6KW. This is because the owner likes to fish for tuna and the 12KW resolution makes it easier for him to spot the birds. Climbing down the tower, let's make our way onto the main deck. Our next stop is the cockpit, where the fun part of the job takes place. Giving this area its clean look are her newly replaced sole, which is made of flexi teak. This is a PVC sole that requires very little maintenance, which is part of what her refit two years ago was all about. Aft on the starboard side is a tuna door for pulling in the day's haul one by one. Running along the outside of the cockpit are combing pads and all new teak cover boards providing both comfort and classic sportfish appeal. 
On the port side of the bait well is where you hook up to shore power when you're back on the dock. Forward and still below the gunnel, we come to our water hookups allowing you to wash down the deck in between fish. After you get your catch on board, they're placed in one of two fish boxes. The one on the starboard side is macerated. And then between the fish boxes is a release saddle chair with six rod holders. Perhaps the piece of equipment associated most with catching big fish, this is sure to get a lot of use. As far as aft storage and her tackle center, these can be found under the seating just aft of the helm. The helm seats themselves are a great feature of this boat. Most notably, these high-end Lebrock seats swivel around 180 degrees, giving you and two other guests a great view of the action in the cockpit. And then there's another crucial upgrade made to the cockpit, which is this sunshade. It provides great shade when you're bottom fishing or doing maintenance when you're on the dock. And while you're tied up to the dock for a bit of extra privacy, the owner had custom bras made that block out the Isenglass enclosure. This lessens the sun's wear and tear on the boat and makes the enclosure feel less like a fishbowl in the marina. The first thing that you notice in person is that this space is air conditioned. It can be completely enclosed with all new eyes and glass panels. The panels to port, starboard, and aft can be rolled up while the stratoglass across the front is essentially fixed and takes on the wind and waves head on. Below the panels on the left and right is bench seating with adjustable backrests for your guests. Looking forward to the seating on the starboard side is where we find a storage compartment used primarily for stowing covers and gaffs. Now, let's turn our attention to her Palm Beach style helm. Seeing as this is where you'll mostly be running the boat, it matters that this entire station has been completely updated. Across the top are a pair of CAT engine monitors. Then below these are two Garmin 8212 multifunction displays. Between the displays are her ICOM VHF radio and an RD33 data display. Her backlit switch and actuator panel is just above the wheel in between engine ignitions. And her stainless steering wheel is part of a completely replaced steering column. Finally, you can see that she has a Simrad AP24 autopilot. Up in the overhead are newly replaced teaser reels with a durable powder coating. One thing that I really like is how the entire helm deck raises up to reveal the engine room. It's amazing how tidy and spacious this little engine room is. Filming small engine rooms is usually the worst part of filming these walkthroughs, but not on this boat. First, we see her twin cat C7.1 engines. Between the engines is her eight kilowatt phaser generator. Now let's talk some numbers. JC offers you a 27 knot cruise while burning only 40 gallons of fuel per hour. When the throttles are wide open, you can expect to see speeds of up to 32 knots while burning 50 to 52 gallons per hour. Continuing forward, we come to her minimal bow. Centerline is a hatch directly above the berth found below. And then furthest forward is the boat's ground tackle comprised of a Lumar windlass. Our last stop is below deck in the salon. Cooled by a 16,000 BTU AC system, the lower cabin offers her owner a place to escape from the sun at the end of the day. To starboard is a dinette made up of a high-low table with leather seating. When the table is lowered, this area converts into a berth. Above this seating is a flat screen TV, as well as the primary breaker panel for the boat. Now looking to port, we see her wet head, which is complete with a vanity as well as a shower head. Forward of this is the galley, complete with a microwave, a two burner glass cooktop that hides away, and a recently replaced isotherm stainless refrigerator. Finally, in the forwardmost section of the bow is a berth, just below a skylight. This boat is listed for sale with John Thompson. An avid fisherman himself, his passion for boats and being on the water has followed him his entire life. First as a kid who just loved fishing, and then as a charter captain, and finally today as a broker. 
On behalf of John Thompson, the Denison Yachting Team, and myself, thank you so much for joining us on today's walkthrough of this 38 Out Island. I hope that I answered most of your questions about the boat, but if you're left wondering anything, you can reach out to John Thompson anytime.